built out of necessity, the Bod class would go on to become one of the most useful yet bizarre classes ever created by Starfleet. But what do we know about this unusual class? Well, today, we'll find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic, using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the Bod class, a fan design to better understand its place in Star Trek history. And as always, because this is just a bit of my own fan fiction, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust, and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. By the early 2260s, the United Federation of Planets was growing at an ever-increasing rate. And due to this unexpected expansion, Starfleet Command began to experience its effects firsthand. After the first Federation Klingon War of 2256, resources within the Federation were tight. Colonies, starbases, and starships had to be repaired or simply rebuilt from scratch, and the Federation was still experiencing these difficulties when the unexpected increase in Federation membership and territory began to rise. And because Starfleet Command had a long list of priorities, certain other facilities' construction was put on hold, until the Federation and its defenses were back up to full strength. One large problem being experienced throughout the Federation was a lag in communications. Normally, as the exploration and scientific vessels traveled deep space, they would drop what was known as a subspace booster relay which would pick up a signal from a starship, facility, or colony and do exactly what its name suggested. Boost the signal, allowing for much faster communications. Then construction starships would eventually come in and replace said relays with more permanent structures, solidifying control over that area of space for the organization. But with resources at a premium, and the Klingon Empire having destroyed most outer comm relays, suddenly Starfleet Command had a big communications problem. Approaching the Federation Council to ask permission to divert essential resources to tackling this issue, Starfleet Command was shocked when the Council denied this request, feeling that rebuilding member world defenses and outposts along the Klingon border was the actual top priority in case the Klingon Empire changed its mind and decided to go for round two in a large-scale conflict. And Starfleet Command was not impressed by this decision at all, but what could be done about it? After hearing about the comm issue, and since a great deal of resources had been diverted to rebuilding its fleet of starships, Dr. Richard Daystrom of the Daystrom Institute approached Starfleet's Admiralty with an elegant solution, a starship design that could act as a large, mobile communications array. And after reviewing the initial idea for the starship design, Starfleet Command would agree with Daystrom's plan, passing the design off to their own starship design team for immediate implementation, and the BOD class would be born. Sitting at a length of approximately 326.2 meters and 21 decks tall, the BOD class was designed to be operated by 510 officers and crew members. The BOD class would take on the basic appearance of the highly successful Constitution class, with one major difference. A large subspace array would be added to the middle section of the starship's secondary hull, and as a result, the internal layout for this class would be quite different than that of the Constitution class. In the BOD class, main and impulse engineering would be combined into one area located within the saucer section, while an additional computer core, specially designed by the Daystrom Institute, would be included in the secondary hall to handle all incoming and outgoing communications. The BOD class would have a standard safe cruising speed of Warp Factor 4 and an emergency maximum speed of Warp Factor 6. 
Of course, this maximum speed would be rarely used, as even the slightest inertial stress on the large Comaray panels could mean weeks of extensive repairs for them. The BOD class's nacelle positions would also be lowered as compared to the Constitution class to accommodate its subspace panels within the warp field. Though not intended for combat, the designers of the BOD class were all too well aware of the dangers of deep space travel, and thus this vessel would be armed with seven standard dual phaser emitter banks and two photon torpedo launchers, one forward and one aft. Though shielding for this class was standard for the time, the truth was that the BOD class's shields were far weaker than most starship classes within the fleet. Again, this was due to the comma ray included in the design, meaning a much larger shield bubble needed to be created to protect the starship, expending more power at a far greater rate. Planning ahead for a time when resource allocation was back to normal for the Federation, the BOD class would also contain several construction bays, so that the class itself could act as a construction facility for permanent communication relay construction. In this event, a BOD class starship would fabricate the habitat and control systems and the structure for the new base. And once brought online, the BOD class's own subspace panels would then be detached and reattached to the new facility, cutting down construction time immensely. Then, the BOD class vessel would return to the nearest starbase, where a new set of subspace panels would be waiting for it and could be easily reinstalled into the starship. To aid with relay construction, the BOD class would contain several specially designed shuttlecraft and construction drones. Though excellent in its own mission profile, there were several drawbacks to this design, one being a lack of internal living space. Due to the necessity of larger cargo holds to carry the construction equipment and parts required to build permanent arrays, Many facilities normally aboard a starship were cut from the design or decreased in size. There were very few scientific laboratories aboard the starship, and junior crew members were required to live in barrack-style facilities. Even recreational areas were cut back, with the removal of both the bowling alley and pool areas. As a result, crew morale and mental health tended to suffer in vessels of this class requiring Starfleet Command to institute a far faster crew rotation policy for this class. But even with these drawbacks, the class would be seen as a success. Having a mobile comma ray would mean as the exploration starships ventured further out, ships of this class would do the same, and intrafleet communications would remain relatively quick and stable. Though it should be noted that many starships of this class would serve their first terms not in the furthest frontiers of deep space, but rather closer to home, until several destroyed comrades could be replaced within the core of the Federation. But by the mid-2270s, the BOD class was beginning to show its age. For a time, Starfleet Command had considered building an entire refit line for the BOD class even constructing a few prototype vessels to test the new technology to be included in the refit vessel. But as Starfleet's technology had also begun to grow by leaps and bounds, and with the Klingon and Romulan empires seemingly now in a stalemate offensive-wise, the urgency for the BOT class refit simply no longer really existed as Starfleet could now simply fabricate easily combined components to create communications arrays that could be carried into position by dedicated construction starship classes. And so the refit BOD class project would be considered an obsolete project and abandoned in 2278. And the last of the BOD class starships, the USS Eternal September, would be decommissioned in 2283. Created by a loophole for necessity, the BOD class would prove its worth during a time of uncertainty and fear for the United Federation of Planets, earning this outside-of-the-box design its place 
in Starfleet history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the BOD class and the historical narrative that I've created here? Do you want to see more videos like this one? Well, leave your comments in the section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel keep communication speedy with you all? Then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.